Udadi, Udadi, the great Indian Ocean. The great Indian Ocean. Udabaya, Udabaya, affected by fear. Affected by fear. Anga Vipa, Anga Vipa, bodily trembling. Bodily trembling. Margam, Margam, way. Sapadi, Sapadi, quickly. Quickly. Alipuram, Alipuram, the city of the enemy. The city of the enemy. Harabat, Harabat, like that of Harab. Like that of Harab. Mahade, Mahade. Didaksha, Didaksha, desiring to burn to ashes. Desiring to burn to ashes. Dure, Dure, at a long distance. At a long distance. Suri, Suri, intimate friend. Intimate friend. Matita, Matita, being agreed by. Being agreed by. Rosha, Rosha, in anger. In anger. Sushona, Sushona, red hot. Red hot. Dusha, Dusha, by such a glance. By such a glance. Tata. Yamana, Tata, Yamana, burning in heat, burning in heat. Makara, Makara, sharks, sharks. Uraga, Uraga, snakes, snakes. Nakra, Nakra, crocodiles, crocodiles. Chakra, Chakra, circle, circle. So the translation is, by the divine grace, H.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada, the personality of Godhead. Ramachandra being agreed for his distant intimate friend Sita glanced over the city of the enemy Ravana with red hot eyes like those of Hara who wanted to burn the kingdom of heaven. The great ocean trembling in fear gave him his way because its family members, the aquatics like the sharks, snakes and crocodiles were being burnt by the heat of the anger, red, the angry red hot eyes of the Lord. So please repeat. <coughs> the personality of God had Ramchandra. The personality of God had Ramchandra. Being grieved, being grieved for his distant intimate friend. For his distant intimate friend. Sita. Sita. Glanced over the city. Glanced over the city. Of the enemy Ravana. Of the enemy Ravana. With red hot eyes. With red hot eyes. Like those of Hara. Like those, those of Hara. Who wanted to burn the kingdom of heaven. Who wanted, wanted to burn the kingdom of heaven. The great ocean. The great ocean. Trembling in fear. Trembling in fear. Gave him his way. Gave him his way. Because its family members. Because its family members. Like the sharks. Like the sharks, like the like sharks, the sh snakes and crocodiles, snakes and crocodiles, were being burnt by the heat of the eye, angry red hot eyes of the Lord. Were being, being burnt, burnt by, by the heat, the heat of, of the red hot eyes, eyes, of, eyes of, the of the Lord. The purport by His Divine Grace is the Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada. Jai Shiva Prabhupada. Uh, the personality of God was every has every sentiment of sentient being, of a sentient being. Like all other living beings, because he is the chief and original living entity, the supreme source of all other living beings. He is the Nitya, or the chief eternal amongst all other eternals. He is the chief one, and all others are the dependent. He uh, is the chief one, and all others are the dependent, many. The many eternals are supported by the one eternal, and though, thus both the eternals are qualitatively one. Due to such oneness, both the eternals constitutionally have a complete range of sentiments. But the difference is that the sentiments of the chief eternal are different in quantity from the sentiments of the dependent eternals. When Ram Chandra was angry and showed his red hot eyes, the whole ocean became heated with that energy, so much so that the aquatics within the great ocean felt the heat, and the personified ocean trembled in fear and offered the Lord an easy path for reaching the enemy's, enemy city. The impersonalists will see havoc in this red hot sentiment of the Lord 
because they want to see negation and perfection. Because the Lord is absolute, the impersonal is imagined of the absolute. In the absolute, the sentiment of anger, which resembles mundane sentiments, must be uh, conspicuous by absence. Due to a poor fund of knowledge, they do not realize that the sentiment of the absolute person is transcendental to all mundane concepts of quality and quantity. Had Lord Ramachandra's sentiment been of mundane origin, how could it disturb the whole ocean and its inhabitants? Can any mundane red-hot eye generate heat in the great ocean? These are factors to be distinguished in terms of the personal and impersonal conceptions of the Absolute Truth. As it is said in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Absolute Truth is the source of everything. So the Absolute Person cannot be devoid of the sentiments that are reflected in the temporary mundane world. Rather, the different sentiments found in the Absolute, either in anger or in mercy, have the same qualitative influence, or in other words, there is no mundane difference of value because these sentiments are all on the Absolute Plane. Such sentiments are definitely not absent in the Absolute, as the impersonalists think, making their mundane estimations of the transcendental world. So the verse again is the personality of Godhead Ramchandra, being agreed for his distant intimate friend Sita, glanced over the city of the enemy Ravana with red-hot eyes, like those of Hara, who wanted to burn the kingdom of heaven. The great ocean, trembling in fear, gave him his way because its family members, the aquatics, like the sharks, snakes, and crocodiles, were being burnt by the heat of the angry red hot eyes of the Lord. So one thing, there's so many points here, but the verse doesn't, um, it seems as if when you're reading the verse, that the red hot eyes is being targeted towards the city. But in actuality, if you read in the ninth canto, I have a few verses I can read, he's, he's actually mad at uh, Varuna, or in the Ramayans, or in the ninth canto, he's known as Samudha, or Samudha, some, something to that effect, uh, because he wasn't cooperating. But um, I just, and because he had, because Lord Ramachandra was sitting for three days in meditation, requesting access to the uh, to Ravana's uh, city, and the ocean wasn't responding. And um, I might as well just go on this train of thought, because I was going to talk about this difference between impersonalism and personalism, but I might as well just take this path. Um, uh, <coughs> which seems to be a, a standard kind of, uh, you know, regular occurrence in the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. When he comes, you know, he, uh, with Indra, Indra was an insulted because he decided, uh, Krishna wanted to teach him a lesson, and he said, you should do Govinda, you should do a Govinda puja instead of the normal Indra puja. And he became forgetful of who Krishna was. Brahma also wasn't sure exactly who this coward boy was, and he wanted to test him by stealing the, uh, the coward boys and the calves. There's a, also a story with Indra and Prithu Maharaj, where Indra, Prithu Maharaj was trying to perform a hundred, was it Rajasuya or Ashramedha? Ashramedha sacrifices. And um, every time, you know, he got up to 99, and every time uh, it was time for the, the 100th, which would require a horse, Especially, you know, prepared for the sacrifice, Indra would come in the disguise of a sannyasi and steal the horse, and no one would stop him because they just saw a sannyasi and, and they didn't realize that it was actually Indra, because Indra thought he'll become as powerful as me. And up to that point, he was the only one that performed 100 uh, sacrifices, and. Um, you know, this is what happens when you get to a certain level, you become forgetful uh, and uh, you start to identify with this opulence that you have. And, uh, and, but uh, just to get back to that story, that he, 
at that point, when, when Prithu found out that Indra was about to do this, again, he wanted to, uh, to shoot him with his arrow, and he was stopped by the priests performing the yagya, and they said they could chant mantras and bring Indra into the fire. If I remember correctly, they could bring him into the fire. And when Brahma saw this, he immediately appeared on the scene and stopped it. said, you can't, you can't do that to Indra. He's like the, the sum total of all the demigods. He's like the supreme personality of God in the material world. He, I mean, I think that's actually one of the, in one of the verses. He says something to that effect, that Indra is the supreme. You can't burn him in the fire of Yogya. He's made a mistake. You have to for, bring him here and forgive him. Then Vishnu appears. And Vishnu asks him also. He comes on, on the back of Garuda. This is a beautiful description. How he arrived. And he he's actually has to... Uh, hold on to the back of Garuda because his feet don't touch the ground. Uh, Vishnu, that is. And so he's leaning up against Garuda. And um, he, you know, suggests to uh, Prithu that he, that he forgive Indra. Um, and and Prithu Maharaj, as we know, is the Shakta Veshavatar. So th there seems to be a common um, uh, thread here that when one becomes very opulent, they sometimes forget <coughs> where their opulence is coming from, where their power is coming from. And uh, this is an important point for everybody to learn. And, you know, what to speak of great demigods, and we're, we're, it's all relative, of course, but anyone who starts to become, think that they have arrived and made it, you know, you forget. Yeah, there's a, and actually, it's over here. There's a really nice verse that um, explains, uh, explains this. Uh, it's from a Hindi poem, poem. So, you know, it's just like if you were to take all of your, uh, take, you take your place of residence, say you have a very nice house, you take all your possessions, cars or whatever, your wealth, your family, and you project a picture of that onto a cloud. Uh, and then you try to move into it. It just, it's missed. So, you know, when we, at the time of death, we try to take shelter of those things. If we're thinking about our house, our, our family, our wealth, our bank balance. You know, it's, like, uh, it's like mist in the wind. It's, it's, uh, it's just, uh, in, in like in Ecclesiastes, it says, or in uh, Jai Deutta's book, um, he says, uh, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's... a. a you know, it's all, and vanity actually is translated in those days as a vapor, uh, a gaseous, like a, a misty thing that's not substantial. The only thing that we know that's, that has substance is Krishna. And the only way we know how to associate with Krishna, really, I mean, okay, it takes a lot of faith because we're not actually, we see the deity and we're reading about Krishna, but we're not actually having conversations with him or, you know, seeing him personally. And so, the only way we can uh, grab onto him is through sound vibration at the time of death, mm -hmm. by being able to chant out, chant out the holy name, like Ajumil did. Uh, or hopefully you get devotees around you chanting or something like that. I happened to, to see a devotee that I knew. Uh, out in, he's actually lived north, over, sort of like in Mountain View. His name is Bhattalaswa. He did a lot of service for Prabhupada, um, cultivating um, the various professors, uh, Dr. Judah, there was another one, Rosenstadt or something. They wrote books. Uh, one wrote, Judah wrote a book about the Hare Krishna movement that Prabhupada was very fond of. And then uh, the other one, he wrote, based on Prabhupada's um, you know, preaching about life comes from life, he wrote a very interesting book. I can't remember the name of it. But Bhattalasa was very instrumental in that, and he fell away, so, but not exactly completely, but uh, he knew he was about to leave his body and he had Siddhant to come. And it was really nice seeing him. Uh, you could see how much love he had for Prabhupada. He was really... Uh, a 
so, but he, he and he didn't have his neck beads on, he didn't have T-lock on. And, um, and I was wondering about it, because I didn't know what had happened to him. But as he's talking, he starts talking about Prabhupada, and then he gets someone to give him his Japa beads. And you see him just starting to work his Japa beads. He's remembering. He tells some beautiful stories about Prabhupada. So what we have at the time of death is the sound vibration of Krishna. That's the only thing. Just like the story of Katanga. And here, Parikit's on the, uh, at the moment. Now it's, this has been mainly being talked about. I want, I want to just read a few verses from the ninth canto. Uh, <clears throat> and Sukadev Goswami knows it's getting close to the tenth canto, so he's preparing uh, Parikit for Krishna, because Ramachandra is the closest incarnation to Krishna. Uh, and, but he's uh, coming as the perfect uh, human leader, like a human being, as a king. He's extremely moral and rigid in following all the, his responsibilities. Krishna, on the other hand, does whatever he wants. And the, so he's preparing Parikit Maharaj because people will misunderstand sometimes in thinking that Krishna is a Bhagavati or he's with um, <laughs> other men's wives in the middle of the night. Not understanding who this personality is, he's Krishna. And actually this goes back to the original point about the impersonalists and the purple. It's interesting how that worked. Um, because the impersonalists, they get angry. They think, oh, because here Ramachandra is becoming angry, they think, see, he's just like us. And there's actually, there was some, some politician in India um, who said that that was proof that the modes of material nature are stronger than, uh, this was, in other words, that Ramachandra was simply a, a manifestation of the Brahman. It's actually understood that when the living entity finally gets out of the uh, animal kingdom, gets to the human form of life, he begins to understand Oh, there's so much variety in this world. He can intel have an intel intelligence to understand this various species and this different, you know, varieties of pleasures and, and knowledge. And then gradually, gradually, he may get to the point where he realizes the undifferentiated, absolute truth, which is the Brahman. And it's all one. But then you go beyond that. He gets to the spiritual world where there's all this variety, all these beautiful flowers and different types of birds and different types of pastimes, which is the reality. That is reality. This is the shadow, or as Prabhupada often said, the preferred reflection. This is shadow, that's reality. Like, I, I, I've often said this, that when I saw Prabhupada, I didn't know, so I had read and talked with devotees, and uh, read the Krishna book, the Bhagavad Gita, and talked with a lot of devotees, been on Harinam, actually, even. but... So I guess I had some inkling, but when I saw Prabhupada, I could see he was in reality. And was, you know, actually when I was growing up in high school, we used to have this expression that someone's cutting a profile. You know, he's playing a role. And we were always like checking each other out, <laughs> cutting each other down. Don't get too full of yourself. So um, <clears throat> you see Prabhupada, he was like, he's, you know, it wasn't like some of all it, it was reality. And everything else around him seemed like, like black and white television, different, sh uh, various shades of gray and illusion. And he was in, in color, like going from black and white TV. When we grew up in the 50s, all we had was black and white TV. Then we got to color TV. It was like, wow. But that was what Prabhupada was. He was, but he was reality. You could see he knew exactly who he was. He knew who God was. He knew what his relationship with God was. He knew who I was. You could, you, you could feel it. You could see it. He, it wasn't, you know, it was just a very profound thing that this person was in reality. And he was teaching us, the reality is, there's many varieties uh, in the spiritual world. It's not all one. And so when Ramachandra is angry, that's not Maya. That's legitimate anger. It's a spiritual anger. There's, there is such a thing as um, righteous indignation. 
that can be used. Anger can be used in the service of the Lord, like Hanuman. I, I heard this one, Manaji gave me a class a couple of weeks ago. I don't know what her name was, but she was in the manor, and she was saying, she quoted from the Ramayana saying that when Hanuman, after Ramchandra came back to Ayodhya, all his brothers like Bharat and Suchagna, they all said, it's okay Hanuman, we got this now, we'll take care of Ram. And Ma Hanuman was like, he felt like I had nothing, I had nothing to do now. My whole service was getting Sita back and helping him, and now, what am I going to do? I got no service. So he, but he had to get, do service, so what he decided to do was to make sure that no fly flew into the mouth of Ram Chandra. Have you ever heard this before? I never heard it either, but she swore it was true. So, I hope it is. <laughs> but, but the point is there, that you know, sometimes you have service and you're involved in a very intense program, and then all of a sudden that program, you've reached the end, of, and now, what do you do? Well, you make sure you, you don't worry about whether you have the same adrenaline rush, you just make sure you keep in, in, in the service mentality. The service, uh, you know, that you're serving the servants of the of the Sankirtan movement. So, is there any? Anybody have anything to say right now? Question, comment? Because I I just read a few verses here from the Ramayana, not the Ramayana, but the Shrimad Bhagavatam. Well, that was the end of the fly story. That's it. <laughs> That's it. The story is that it's that now after being involved in all these carrying a mountain to Lakshman to save him because he couldn't find the herb in doing all these, going over to Ravana's kingdom and burning up the whole city with his <laughs> tail, all these incredible adventures. And now, the, the adventure's over and now he's, and he's, got his, he's got his brothers there, Bharat and Chaitanya and Lakshman and the whole kingdom and the armies. So, you know, and he's a monkey. So he decided, his service will be is to keep the flies out of Ram Chandra's mouth. I, I just thought that was adorable myself. I think I, I understand it to a certain extent because you know when you're we were fighting to get the airports open, getting the national parks open for book distribution, uh, legalizing, being able to stay in the buildings that we had, they trying to kick us out, all these battles that we were fighting. And then, you know, things get more, like, accepted, we're accepted, this and that, and then you got to find something that keeps you uh, enlightened again. Uh, so, anyway, let me just read this story. Uh, What's the address? The address? Uh, 3081 Roxbury Road. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I, where I used to live. Um, <laughs> it's... Uh, the text 13, chapter 10, canto 9. 9, 10. So what happened as far as, I, well, the first before it says, Lord Ramachandra, whose Lord's feet are worshipped by Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, had assumed the form of a human being. Thus he performed the funeral ceremony of Jatayu, who was killed by Ravana. The Lord then killed a demon named Kadamba, and after making friends with the monkey chiefs, killing Vali, and arranging for the deliverance of Mother Sita, he went to the beach of the ocean. Now what I remember in the Ramayana is, is that actually right before he went to the beach, he, uh, the Bishan came, Ravana's stepbrother. And first Sugriva didn't trust him, and he came with four other ministers. And uh, Sugriva didn't trust him, and he advised Ram not to trust him. And then Ram, Ram Chandra asked Hanuman, and Hanuman said, I, I, don't, I don't see anything ill motive here. I think you could trust him. And Ram Chandra said, well, it doesn't matter because he's come and asked for shelter, I have to give him shelter. So he accepts him. And then he said, he asked, he asked Vibhishan about Ravana. He explains to uh, um, Ram Chandra about why he's so powerful and where he's, you know, where he's weakest. And then he says, I think the best way to get to the city is to ask the god of the ocean to help you cross over. So then Ram Chandra goes to the ocean and he sits down to meditate. 
He says, after reaching the beach, Lord Ramachandra fasted for three days, awaiting the arrival of the ocean personified. When the ocean did not come, the Lord exhibited the pastimes of anger. And simply by his glancing over the ocean, all the living entities within it, including the crocodiles and sharks, were agitated by fear. Then the personified ocean fearfully approached Lord Ramachandra, taking all paraphernalia to worship him, falling at the Lord's lotus feet. The personified ocean spoke as follows. See, but when you read that verse, it seems like he's looking over at the city of Ravana, and he's angry at that city. And But by a byproduct of that, the ocean is getting hot. Yeah, but it's the ocean he's mad at. He's also mad at the, at the yeah, city. He's, he's, he's just mad. All, all powerful supreme person. We we are dull minded. This is this is Varuna speaking, and um, he says we we are dull minded and did not understand who you are. But now we understand that you are the supreme person, the master of the entire universe, the unchanging and original personality of Godhead. The demigods are infatuated with the modes of goodness, the Pajapanis with the modes of passion, and the Lord of Ghosts with the mode of ignorance. But you are the master of these qualities. So this purpose, the short purpose, is interesting. The word jadiya refers to intelligence like that of an animal. And persons with such intelligence cannot understand the Supreme Personality of God. Without being beaten, an animal cannot understand the purpose of a man. Similarly, those who are dull-minded cannot understand the Supreme Personality of God. But when punished severely by the modes of material nature, they begin to understand Him. A Hindi poet has said, Dukha se sabha hari bhaje, sukha se bhaje koi. Sukha se aga hari bhaje, dukha katan se hoya. When one is distressed, he goes to the church or temple to worship the Lord. But when, but when opulent, he forgets the Lord. Therefore, the punishment by the Lord through material nature is necessary in human society. For without... For without it, man, men forget the supremacy of the Lord due to their dull, blunt intelligence. So this appears to happen not only with, 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 with us, but with the demigods as well. Mm. My Lord, you may use my water as you like. Indeed, you may cross it and go to the abode of Brahman, when who is the uh, great source of disturbance and crying for the three worlds. The great cause of disturbance and crying for the three worlds. He is the son of Vishrava. He is condemned like urine. Please go to kill him. And thus, regain your wife, Sita Devi, O great hero, although my water presents no impediment to your going to Lanka. Please count, construct a bridge over it to spread your transcendental fame. Upon seeing this wonderfully uncommon deed, your lordship, the all great heroes and kings in the future will glorify you. And you can still see it. If, I'm sure most of you have seen on on the internet, the pictures of the stones mm -hmm. from space, you can still mm -hmm. see those stones like that. And there's another pastime also, I just, as I was reading, is this, the one where uh, Nanda Maharaj was a codice, and he wanted to take bath in the Jamuna before time to break fast. And one of Varuna's associates, who didn't understand, grabbed him and captured him and some of his friends, the coward men, and brought them to Varuna's kingdom. And Krishna understood what was going on. Then he went, and but Varuna immediately accepted, realized, oh, this is Krishna, this is Krishna's father. Um, and he received him properly with all, you know, opulence and provided him, because the ocean is the source. Prabhupada said that um, when things are going nicely in human society, the, the ocean, Mother Bhumi, in the ocean, you can go to the shore and you'll just see valuable gems. There was even one of the, the Klondike up in Alaska. Mm -hmm. I read a book about it a long time ago. And it said that you could just go along the shore of the ocean there, up in Alaska, and it'd just be gold. Mm -hmm. Bits of gold all along the ocean there. So, Varuna provides, uh, gives all this wealth to uh, these jewels to um, the coward men and Krishna. The coward men are amazed. They can't figure out. Now they're thinking, he's not just a demigod. He must be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They're really, really like stunned by this. And they're thinking, wow, this must mean we're, we're, we're going to attain salvation. You know, 
they're living with Krishna. And they're thinking, well, maybe now we'll be able to go back home. Um, so then Krishna shows them, he takes them to a lake, the same lake that Akura saw Mahavishnu and Anantasesha. And he shows them the whole spiritual world and all the varieties. He said, they, that's, that's where that example about, that I was giving, he said, they were, when you go down under the water and you first see varieties, then you see the undifferentiated ones, and as you come up to different levels, you know, it's like that. The analogy is like coming up from water, and finally you see the reality of all varieties, the real reality, that all of this is just a reflection of. So, uh, but I, I just want, I didn't want to forget to do this about Dr. Paul. I love, I'm so, I don't know how to thank you. I'm so humbled by what you've been doing in the kitchen. Oh, oh man. Instead, it's like, God, it's wonderful. So, it's going to feel good. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, I, I, we should have a festival for you. <laughs> you can come too. Nice. I can come too? Yeah. You can hear yeah, that, you're invited. <laughs> But you have to cook. <laughs> <laughs> the coconut ice cream. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's one. What's it? You have that one little section that gives you the clarity of the difference, the before and after. Yeah. You haven't done. At least I saw this was this morning. Yesterday I saw right. one section, and just by the sink there, you can't. I just it's because when you're in it, you don't grasp what happens and. Now it's so, it's kind of, yeah. it's real. I don't have words to thank you. Really. Oh, it's my pleasure. That's just the beginning. We're going to fix some tiles. And... Yeah. Great. Clean the whole thing. Yeah. Fix some windows. Yeah. 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 Clean the whole thing. Clean the windows. Have you seen it? Oh, no, I haven't. I don't know if you met Kaivalya. She's been away for two months. No. Taking care of her parents. Here you go. Anyway, um, Yogi, do you have anything? No. Okay. Well, I really, I'm not, I'm not, you can turn it off.